Hi and welcome again. I'm Jeff Yi and this is video number seven of Particles of the Universe, the video series. And this one is on orbital shapes. Now in video number six, we covered orbitals with skittles, right? Proton, electron, and the electron takes a path around the proton. Well, in the case of hydrogen, one proton, the electron has a probability of being in all these different places but its shape is spherical. The curious thing about it, if you add more protons to the nucleus, the electron begins to take different shapes. And the question is why? Why would the electron do that just because of the configuration of protons in the nucleus? Two quick reminders before starting the video. The first is that all the information in this presentation is available in both the books and on the website in the URLs you see. And the second is I will cover blue slides in detail and red slides you can pause at any time to read, such as this one, which covers the wave constants and variables that will be used in the presentation. All right, so now we're gonna cover orbital shapes. Last time we covered atomic orbitals, this time the path that the electron takes and the unique shapes that it makes. Now for this one, again, if energy flows as waves, and in atomic orbitals, it was suggested that electrons move to the point where the sum of the forces is zero when in proximity of a proton, then the strange shapes of orbitals can be explained based on the arrangement of protons. And again, we're going to have the recently discovered pentaquark as the structure of the proton to thank for this one again. But first off, the shapes. The S orbital, top of the pyramid here, is in red. It's spherical. P is in yellow. D orbital in blue. F orbital in green. And these are the shapes of the atomic orbitals and the path of the electron. But first, to explain probability, because the electron, as was mentioned earlier, does not take an orbit around the proton like a satellite would around Earth. It has a probability of being in a particular location. And so again, revisiting the pentaquark structure of the proton, there are axis, lines where there is the repelling force. That is where the wave would pass through essentially what is a gluon. It's the strong force between two of those quarks slash electrons at the tetrahedral vertices. Now, as a reminder, these are not going to be regular electrons. When in proximity, just like uh, how an electron and positron annihilate, their wave structure completely changes. In this case now, the longitudinal waves are not reflected and all of its energy becomes that transverse wave, otherwise known as a strong force, but it repels beyond that. And that was shown earlier and proven because the same uh, uh, coupling constant, the fine structure constant, is seen not only in the strong force, but is also seen in the Bohr radius but it's squared, and it's squared because it passes through two electrons. Anyway, back to the point here is that you have an attractive force that is attractive all the time. It's the Coulomb force, the square of the distance, and you have a repelling force at the cube of the distance that's axial. That is going to always pull the electron in, but at certain points as the proton rotates, there are axes now where it will be repelled. And that's shown here on the left, and you can see the probability density of the electron in the s-orbital such as the Bohr radius on the right. And that explains why the electron seems to be almost you know, anywhere and has a probability, and that's because it is constantly being pulled into the proton, but at certain points it is being pushed away. Now before we get into orbitals, it's worth talking about the tetrahedron uh, structure. Right? The, the proton is a uh, pentaquark, it's most likely a tetrahedron, just like the electron was explained to be a tetrahedron of 10 wave centers. Now these are the tetrahedral numbers, and you see the height of a tetrahedron and the column on the left. The most important one is going to be the numbers in each layer. So for example, a two-level tetrahedron has four in total, but you see that a, a it's three in that layer. So it's one, then three, six, ten, and fifteen. And these numbers are important because you're going to see that 
in the orbitals and then also again in the atomic element sequence. So first off, let's talk about the s orbital. So with helium, we have protons with two different spins. And if you can see in the very top there, a uh, line that passes through uh, just um, you know, two of those protons, but two protons with opposite spin. Again, the legend here has uh, spin up as the triangle with the uh, pointed edge facing up and spin down with the pointed edge uh, facing down. Now, moving on to lithium, you can see an arrangement now of three protons. Two protons with the same spin with a line that goes through each of the um, edges of the proton now passes through what would be four quarks in the uh, vertices of the um, tetrahedron, the pentaquark structure. That is what causes the electron to move to the next orbital, 2s. So you can see that some of the two of the electrons are still in the 1s orbital. You can also see the separation now of neutrons and, and lithium it's most stable is with three protons and with four neutrons. And the same thing for beryllium, the next element. Now you see uh, another proton that has been added. So you have two spin up and two spin down. As a result, you have two electrons in the 2s orbital, two in 1s orbital. On the far right, you see uh, Vesper. Vesper is um, used in molecular, uh, molecular structures. And this terminology used from Vesper, which is uh, linear, uh, trigonal planar, uh, trigonal planar times two. And you're going to see the same type of structure for atomic elements now that you see in molecules. And that's why I have the mapping here for Vesper. This is a red slide, so I won't go through this in detail. Um, but again, pause this one if you want. This just blows up the um, details from last slide so you can see it in more detail and how it creates the spherical S orbital. All right, but this is where it gets to be more complex. So beginning with boron, now there is a p orbital, which looks like a, a dumbbell shape. I'll show it on the next slide. And if you look at the, now only protons are, are shown, by the way. It gets complex if you um, have to show neutrons as well. But if you imagine, uh, again, another tetrahedron. And tetrahedron is the simplest geometric structure to keep particles and wave centers um, minimize for wave amplitude, right? So they're at nodes. So if you imagine again a tetrahedron, the protons now would fill out a tetrahedron sequence such that the p orbital has six protons. The shape of it, however, would be, if you look at the diagonal line, now there are three protons on that line two of which are going to be in the same spin, but one is in the opposite spin. Now, if you look at this, imagine the proton is also spinning. Now, as it spins, the same spin protons are going to be spinning in the same direction of the proton. And they're always at it first because that's easiest in terms of energy. It's harder to spin the other direction. But at points where three protons are aligned, now in that spin, you will have two times where that opposite spin proton does align very, very, very briefly with the uh, tetrahedral electrons of the other protons. You see that here, picture is 90 degrees and 270 uh, degrees, and that was just randomly chosen. It really could be any, any degrees, but the point is that it will um, match up twice during that rotation. So when that happens, Again, the, the law here is that as the wave goes through there, as it goes through more, it's going to be pushing out the electron to 3p. So the electron is very, very briefly pushed out even further than it normally would. And this is, oh, this is a red slide. I do need to show this one in a little bit of detail. What happens there at the 90 and 270 degrees now is it pushes that electron out. You don't see it there, and it creates this strange shape, which is the dumbbell shape. And the same process, again, is going to apply for the next two orbitals as well. But back to a blue slide. This is very important now, which is the, uh, the fill order for the protons. So you see both a, a side view and the bottom view. Um, from boron to neon, it will now be um, filling out the bottom row of that tetrahedron. 
but it will do so first in the center. Again, because geometrically, you know, wave centers will uh, try to minimize wave amplitude, and the easiest way in, in terms of geometric structure is going to be building it from the center. And then lastly, it builds out the three at the end, which would be the opposite spin protons. All right, so now we're on to the d orbital, and you can see why it makes sense that we explained the tetrahedron numbers at the very beginning, which is now the d orbital fills out the bottom row of a fourth level, 10 protons. So the p was 6, d is 10, and you're going to see that pattern continue for the f orbital. But another thing to note about here, just a quick reminder, this only shows protons, not neutrons. They're assumed just to be spacers to separate the protons. And the other thing this is not picturing right now is between P and D, there would be the 3S and 3P. Those elements uh, will be shown in the next section. For the purpose of shapes, uh, we're just filling out the tetrahedron right now. And so onto the shape, with that extra proton now, uh, going down that diagonal line you saw earlier, it would force the electron out now at, at two additional points during the proton's rotation. And so now that's been labeled 0, 90, 180, and 270, where it'd be in that alignment, forcing it out to four, uh, the fourth orbital. And here you can see that pictured now, where it would do so. And this creates a unique shape of a clover. So this would actually be a spherical shape, just like the S, uh, but whereas the P was cut uh, twice during the rotation of the proton, now it's cut four times and it creates this clover shape. There's another unique thing about the d orbital. Sorry, I said red slides, I would only pause for five seconds, but this is animated, so I'm gonna walk through the detail, is that with the d orbital, there is one shape that is different than the clover, and that's because the bottom row of a uh, fourth row in a tetrahedron has uh, a unit that would be in the center. That causes a different shape. There's not five uh, protons in a row. But there are, as you go down the edges, five protons in a row, but there's only three faces to the tetrahedron. And so you see the clover shapes in the different faces. But the d orbital does have two shapes that are in the same plane, in the xy plane. And that's a result of the fifth proton having to be added somewhere, and it has to be added to one of the faces of the triangle, and that's why. Now the remaining five will just match the spin up, so that does complete the d orbital. Now moving on to the f orbital, it's the same logic again. Now you have 15 protons that are added. Uh, and this is a little bit confusing to some because the, um, the electrons and protons have to, to match uh, spin up and spin down but it does take a proton eventually away from the next d block that follows, and that'll be explained in the next section. But for this section, to talk about shapes, again, the fifth level of tetrahedron has 15 units. That is seen uh, in the f orbital series from uh, proton count 57 to 71. And again, same logic, but now it is uh, cut you know, two more times again uh, or sorry, twice as many times from as the d orbital. And so now you have an even more complex looking shape. But again, the same logic applies here, which it would be a sphere if it weren't for the times that the protons align briefly and force the electron out, creating this pattern. And also similar to d, you have uh, three protons that would be at the center. They always fill first and then the electrons, uh, sorry, protons at the edges. But that's why you see three different shapes now for the f orbital, and then you see uh, three shapes. And then finally, this last shape, again, just like the d orbital, is also in the same plane, the xy plane. And it will continue to fill out the remaining protons until we get to the last proton now, which is a little bit different because it will eventually have to take uh, one from the D block. And you see that in the, the mass as it transitions uh, both in the, from the 4F to the 5D block and then again from the 5F to the 6D block where the mass uh, increases significantly for at least uh, three neutrons.
And now let's summarize the atomic orbital shapes and what we have discussed in this section. First off is the probability nature of the electron. Right? It's not anywhere and everywhere until we look for it. It does have a, a location. But because of the newly explained pentaquark structure of the proton, it allows both an attractive and a repelling property. It's always attractive and it repels at certain axes, as we described. And just like the electron, that's likely a tetrahedron, and the pentaquark of a proton would also be a tetrahedron, it was explained that the protons, as they assemble in a, a nucleus, are likely also assembling in that same geometric shape. And we see this because the p orbital has uh, six protons, which is the third level. d orbital has 10 protons, which is the fourth level. And the f orbital has 15, which is the fifth level. We're going to give an animated illustration here now of the p orbital because it's as the protons align, as the wave passes through the uh, vertices of each of these protons, what happens now is it will cause the repelling force to be greater. But as the protons spin, there are certain times where it will create this so-called gap. And now we'll finalize this build-out as the electrons are constantly shifting to the rotation of the protons and the entire atomic nucleus, you have something that will eventually look like this, the dumbbell shape of the p orbital. And that's it. That's how atomic orbital shapes can be explained by waves and by a, a unique structure of the proton that has been overlooked for many years, which could be four electrons and one positron, otherwise called the pentaquark. That's it. And that concludes the video on orbital shapes. And in the next video, we're going to discuss the structure, the same structure responsible for the shapes in this video, and how that affects the periodic sequence in the atomic elements in video number eight. See you soon.